Welcome to another product support video tutorial. If you are not yet familiar with the use of resistance heat for soldering and brazing applications, or you are just looking for a better understanding of how it can be properly used, then you are part of the target audience this video is intended for. One of the greatest benefits to using resistance heat for soldering and brazing applications is the ability to produce and control an intense localized heat in a variety of situations ranging from soldering through hole components on circuit boards to brazing copper tubing in refrigeration assemblies. For well over 100 years electrical resistance has been used to create heat and light in everyday items like incandescent light bulbs or the heating elements used in ovens, stovetop burners, toasters, space heaters, curling irons, and similar tools and appliances. These examples represent the use of a standard household current like 120 or 240 AC voltage passed through a closed loop element made of a resistive material or alloy. The amount of resistance and the current being applied will determine the maximum amount of heat available. The temperature can be controlled by adjusting the line voltage or cycling the current to maintain a desired temperature. The supply voltage can be converted to a much safer low voltage output using a specially designed isolated class 2 type step down transformer. Converting to a low voltage high amperage output eliminates the possibility of electrical shock hazards allowing us to develop a wide variety of tools and equipment which can be used for soldering, brazing, and thermal wire stripping applications. The two basic system configurations are the single probe type and the dual electrode tweezer and plier types. The single probe type systems require the use of a fixturing device or cable harness to provide the required return path for the current produced. The dual electrode type systems pass current from one electrode to the other through the conductive material they are in contact with. Because a low voltage AC current is produced, there is no concern regarding polarity when attaching a handpiece or accessory to any power unit. Basic systems generally include a power unit, a foot switch, and a handpiece or mountable accessory. The low output devices have two connection ports and have a built in rheostat or voltage regulating device to control the available power level. The higher output devices have three connection ports or terminal posts to provide three different power ranges. The tap switch dial plate shows the output voltage for each of the eight selectable positions relating to the power range chosen by the two connection terminals being used. These connection ports are commonly referred to as taper pin receptacles, allowing for a friction fit when attaching your handpiece. Simply push the handpiece taper pins into the receptacle, turning slightly until snug. The receptacles are also thread tapped to a quarter twenty for making a mechanical connection or attaching accessories. Now to show resistance heat in action, we have an application which allows us to demonstrate the use of both dual electrode and single electrode style systems. The electrodes in this tweezer style handpiece have been filed to match the surface of the brass pin and bent for ergonomic purposes. After cleaning, the brass pin and metal cap assembly are placed onto the soldering fixture. A small amount of flux paste is then added to the intended joint area. We are using a solder preform. These were made by wrapping a rosin core solder wire around the brass pin and then separating the coiled rings for use. Now with the flux paste and solder preform in place, we will demonstrate resistance soldering using the dual electro tweezer style system. The run light pictured shows the actual dwell time required to melt and flow the solder. Now for the next demonstration, we will use a single electrode probe style system. This requires the use of a current return harness which can be attached directly to the conductive soldering fixture as shown. Like the first demonstration, the brass pin is cleaned and inserted into the metal cap and the assembly is placed onto the soldering fixture. Next, a small amount of flux paste is applied to the intended solder joint area and the preformed solder ring is put into place. Like the tweezer, the carbon electrode has also been customized to better match the contact surface of the brass pin. Again, the run light shows the actual dwell time required to melt and flow the solder. We hope that all the information provided in this video has helped you to better understand the principles and concepts of resistance soldering and brazing. You will also find specific video clips as part of the individual product specification pages provided on our website.